Well, good morning, saints of God. Let me first say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Most of you may have to stay at home on this Mother's Day, and you may not have an opportunity to be with your children, but we send our love from our church, and we know that when this crisis is over, I'm sure that your children are going to embrace you and celebrate your great, great life that God has given you. I want to share a few things with you real quickly, a little house camping. Uh, make sure that you download uh, the Jordan Temple Baptist Church app. You can also find our church on the web under www.jordantemple.org. That gives you all the information regarding our church. Amen. You'll get all of our announcements. You have an opportunity to sow into the ministry if you would like. Now, also, we have something that we call the prayer closet. Your prayer closet is open and we invite you in every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. and Monday through Friday at 12 noon. We have a conference call and all you have to do is call into 206-806-9902. That's a direct line. There's no code that you have to enter. And when you call in, we have inspiration and we have prayer Monday through Friday. Last week we started our sermon series. It's entitled Three Choices in Life. Amen. And so last week the subtitle was Why Sit Here Until We Die. And so today I want to invite you to open up your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7 verses 1 through 4. For the sake of clarity I'm going to be reading from the Living Bible. Elijah replied, the Lord says that by this time tomorrow, two gallons of flour or four gallons of barley grain will be sold in the markets of Samaria for one dollar. The officer assisting the king said, that couldn't happen if the Lord made windows in the sky or opened the floodgates of heaven. But Elijah replied, you will see it happen, but you won't be able to buy any of it. Now there were four leopards sitting outside the city gates. Why sit here until we die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here and we will starve if we go back into the city. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Syrian army. If they let us live, so much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. And for the title of today's message, we're using there is nothing for you to go back to. So very briefly, let me recap last week's part one message. There was a severe famine in the city of Samaria, and the people had become desperate for food. The king of, king of Samaria held the prophet Elijah and God responsible for not eliminating the famine. And the king swore that he would kill Elijah. Elijah responded to the king. Then he said, by this time tomorrow, two gallons of flour and four gallons of barley grain will be sold in the marketplace. In other words, he was saying but that by this time tomorrow that the famine would indeed be over. Well, the king's assistant said that God could not turn things around that fast. That's why right. he said there was no way that God could open up the windows or the floodgates of heaven in 24 hours. Elijah told, told the king's assistant that yes, you will see the floodgates open and the rain will fall and there will be food in Samaria. However, you won't be able to buy any and you won't be able to eat any. While this conversation was taking place in the city, there were four leopards sitting outside of the church. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean sitting outside of the gates of the city, discussing how they were going to make it through the famine. They asked each other, why sit here until we die? 
We will starve if we stay here, and we will starve if we go back into the city. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Syrian army. If they let us live, so much the better, but if they kill us, we would have died anyway. They determined that they had three choices while they sat at the gate. Choice number one was they could stay at the gate of the city and starve to death. Choice number two was go back into the city where there was a famine and they would starve to death. Or number three, that they can surrender to the enemy and be taken as prisoners with the possibility of being killed. They said if we sit here, we are going to starve. If they stayed at the gate, they would have become complacent and have an attitude of do nothing and not exercising any faith whatsoever in God. They would be giving the devil a place to set up camp in their mind as they worried about what would happen to them tomorrow. How long do you wait? We concluded last week that sitting in one place and sitting at the gates outside of the city and sitting and pondering and being complacent was not an option. We knew that we would not stand still while life was moving. Today we're going to focus on verse number four, we're, and it says we will starve if we stay here, and we will starve if we go back into the city. There is nothing for you back there. There is a great similarity between this scripture and the account of Moses leading the people out of Egypt to an unknown land on the other side of the Jordan River that some call the Promised Land. Even though most of the people were wandering through the wilderness and they had a desire to go back. However, Moses kept leading them and God kept punishing them so they had to stay in the wilderness. He told them to press on until the promises of God were manifested. When situations in life get really tough, there can be a group of people that want to go back to the way things were and another group of people that refuse to return to the old way of living. So those same thought patterns are even, even happening in today's time. Moses had made up in his mind that he was not going back to Egypt and he was not going back to slavery. There is nothing for you to go back to. I know this is a stretch, but do you think there is anything that anyone in heaven that has been thinking that they would want to come back here for? Once you get on the other side of the river, once you get in the presence of God, once you get into glory, I doubt seriously if anybody would ever want to come back down here to earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let me tell you something. God is doing new things all the time. Genesis tells the story about a man named Lot. And two angels stopped by Lot's house in the city of Sodom. Sodom was a dreadful and a sinful city. God was giving Lot and his wife and his family, he was giving them a ticket, a free ticket to get out of Sodom quickly before he destroyed the city with fire and brimstone. The angels told Lot, don't look back and don't stop anywhere on the plain. While you're traveling on the road, do not stop and go back to Sodom. That's what the angels of the Lord told uh, Lot before he left with his family. But while they were on the way out of the city, life, Lot's wife looked back at the destruction that was occurring in the city of Sodom, and God turned her into a pillar of salt. She was cursed not because she went back. She was cursed because she looked back, and she had a desire to go back. When God is moving you forward, when he's taking you to better ground, you don't stand there and argue God's point. He's trying to take you higher. You do not suppose to have a desire to go back. There is nothing for you back there. There are some places you don't need to go back to. The leper said, if we go back, we die. 
Why go back to something or someone that has no life, no motivation, no dreams, no plans, no aspirations, and no joy? Why go back to famine people? That's right, I said it. There are some people that don't prosper. They have no joy in their life. They're famine people. Nothing grows out of those relationships. Nothing at all. I could never understand why people go back to dead cities. Places and people where nothing is prospering. There is no life. There is no prosperity. They're in, they're in the same position today that they were in five and six and ten and fifteen years ago. There's no movement. There's no life. Only stagnation. Why go back? The difference between staying at the gate and going back to the city was at the gate, the four lepers supported each other. All four of them had leprosy, but they took care of each other at the gate. They supported each other. In the church, I'm sorry, I mean in the city, people were practicing cannibalism. They were eating each other. If you read the end of chapter 6, You'll find the story about two women who had gotten together and made an agreement. One day they said, we're going to kill and eat your son. And tomorrow, or when tomorrow came, that we would kill the other uh, woman's son. They were actually eating their children. And so in some churches, people are eating each other. They are going around talking about each other, stabbing each other in the back, tearing each other down. That's what some churches are filled with people that are tearing down each other. And the kingdom of God cannot grow if we're pulling each other back every week and every day. No, no, no. Some churches have people that are people leaders. Please don't be like that. The people are raising hell. The deacons are raising hell. The pastor is raising hell. Don't go back lest you die. There is nothing for you to go back to. Isaiah said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do not be uh, misled. Do you not perceive what God is doing? The word of God said is that he's doing a new thing. Can't you see it? Can't you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Can't you see how God is still prospering people even in the midst of today's time? You have come too far. Let me tell you something. You've come too far to turn around and go back from whence. You can. Don't go back. Galatians 4, chapter 4, verse number 9 says, Now, however, since you have come to know the true God through personal experience, not because someone else told you about him, not because grandma or papa told you about him, the Bible says that since you have come to know the true God, for your, from your personal experience, or rather to be known by God, how is it that you are turning back again to the weak and worthless elemental principles of religion? In other words, if God has brought you this far, how is it that you can dare turn back to where you came from? There is nothing for you to go back to. Don't go back to your old self. Amen, amen. I feel a preach right there. God is saying, don't go back to who you used to be when you were strung out on dope. Don't go back to the way you used to be when you had poor judgment. Don't go back to the, use, the way you used to be when you were not exercising godly wisdom. Don't go back to the way it used to be when you were staying out all night long and you were married. The Bible is saying there's no reason to go back in the city and the city is filled up with poverty. God is saying he has more for you. Now I don't know there's only one reason that I can ever think that we would ever want to go back. And that reason is to go back and help somebody that's stuck in it. 
That's what I want to talk about this morning. If you know somebody that's stuck in it and can't get out, then as soon as you get strong enough, as soon as your faith level rises up, then that's the time. If you God puts it on your heart, go back and save those family members that are stuck in the city. That's all we want to talk about this morning, that the only time you want to go back is when your faith is built up. Because now you can go back into the bar. You can go back into the club because your faith is strong. And I know what the word of God says. It says come out of, from among them. But we're not talking about come out from among them. We're talking about when you know you got God on your side. You're strong in your faith. You have no fear of the enemy. You know how to put the devil under your feet. Then now is the time you can go back and help your sister and help your brother and take back what the enemy stole from you. Glory, hallelujah. What are we going to go back to? We don't go back from where we've been. We're on the move right now. Those lepers made a decision. They sat there at the city gates. They had a decision to make. If we go back into the city, we're going to starve. If we stay right here, we're going to starve. If we go forward to the city of Syria, then we know that they have two options. They're either going to kill us or take us prisoners. At some point in time, you got to hold on to your faith and try Trust God. You follow the will of God. If God says move forward to a better land, there may be some enemies in between where you're going to go and where you are right now. There's going to be some challenges between where you are right now and where God wants you to be. There's going to be some hills to climb, some valleys to go through, but when you know God and your faith is strong in God, come hell or high water. You know I'd rather go in the will of God than go back to a life of sin from which I came. I will not go back to a famine. And the church said, amen. We'd like to extend to you an invitation to unite with our church this morning. We pray that the message has resonated with your soul. You only got three options in life. The Bible is saying you can stand still where you are. You can be stagnant. You can just stand right where you are in the, in the spiritual space. You can go back to the life that you used to live. Or you can go forward and trust God. So if you're trusting God, we declare this could be your moment. This could be your time. Let God be your guide. God bless you today and know that my God is on your side.